Hey, this is Brent with Lycus Motorsports. I've got a ton of tools and parts scattered everywhere because we're going to do some uh, bearing clearance checks on uh, this all aluminum, um, I think it's 510 or 511 cubic inches uh, featuring a Shelby aluminum block and some FE power cylinder heads and intake and one of my custom solid roller camshafts. So uh, the crank came in and uh, we waited about, uh, let's see, uh, nine or 10 months. I think I ordered it last November. So it's a, uh, it's a custom crank from, from Bryant. It's a billet uh, steel crankshaft. I had it rim polished and everything. And I'll show you that here in a second. So um, we're gonna check some bearing clearances. I've got, um, uh, diamond pistons hung on some Cali's Ultra connecting rods. Uh, just very high dollar parts. Uh, the rods I think were uh, $1,500, $1,600, something like that. Um, made for very high horsepower applications. Uh, custom diamond pistons and uh, with vertical gas ports and, and all the goodies for uh, this is going to be a dry sump engine. This is our custom uh, camshaft. Um, this is not one of my typical custom camshafts because they actually had to make the core out of a billet piece of steel uh, and then begin grinding it. So that took some time as well. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to check some main and rod bearing clearances um, so we can get this crank to the balance shop to ensure everything is... Uh, is good on it. I've got some calico coated uh, main bearings already in here. My standard operating procedure is to put the first one and the last one in and if those two check okay then I'm good to put the other three in there. Um, let's talk a little bit about bearing clearances and aluminum blocks. Aluminum expands with heat so you have to make allowances for that at design time. That means your compression ratio will go down. That means your lash will grow a whole lot more than a cast iron block aluminum head combination. <laughs> and it, since we have an aluminum uh, foundation for our upper bearing and a steel foundation for our lower bearing, the main bearing clearances are gonna grow as well. So anywhere from I think a half thou to uh, three quarter of a thou so that means at, uh, at cold bearing clearance check time, if I'm aiming for three thousandths or three thousandths and two tenths main bearing clearances, um, I need to be somewhere around uh, two and a half thousandths cold. So when I board gauge everything, um, I need to see roughly two and a half thousandths through here. <laughs> that will ensure that I have enough bearing clearance for uh, when the engine is cold warming up and then sufficient bearing clearance when the engine is hot and running at operating temperature. You don't need to do anything like that with the rod uh, bearings since it's a typical, you know, steel crank, steel rod type deal. And um, I'm going to aim, you know, anywhere from 2.2 two to 2.5 two on the rod bearing clearances. That's what I want to shoot for. So, um... With aluminum blocks, they do not make as much horsepower as a cast iron block. And that's mainly due to ring seal. And what I've seen in the past on horsepower or on engines that are around that 700 horsepower mark, um, there's around 30 or 40 horsepower difference between an all aluminum engine and a cast block aluminum head engine with all the same parts, same cam, compression ratio, and all that sort of thing. So, in, when I first started messing with FEs, uh, well, all aluminum FEs, I would suppose probably, you know, 13, 14, 15 years ago, um, you know, I would compare notes with some other builders and, and make those notifications. So, I've also seen instances of um, running an engine and then dyno it 
pulling it off a dyno to change something and seeing shadows in the cylinders. And that's just because when you have a steel a cylinder sleeve with aluminum around it, uh, that aluminum is going to expand, contract, expand, contract. The sleeve is just not going to be as rigid as it would be in a uh, cast iron block. So you do lose some horsepower. Um, you know, 40 horsepower is about mm, almost two tenths in in a quarter mile. So you kind of have to sit and make that justification if you're going to lose the horsepower. <laughs> Um, if you're going to make it up with the weight. So that varies on application to application. The good thing about aluminum blocks is that uh, you can change the sleeves in them. So if the cylinders wear out, you can pop new sleeves in. They are easier to repair. So if you window a block, you can weld it up a lot easier than you can a cast iron block. <laughs> so um, there are some pluses and minuses. Um, Another minus is aluminum has a greater chance of being porous. Um, just so, um, and, and because of that, uh, it's always very necessary to pressure test each aluminum block. Um, I've seen a lot of them be porous in the lifter bores, and, um, you know, then you need lifter bore bushings and that sort of thing. So, you know, you're looking at uh, about $8,000 for this block. You have to compare it, you know, if it's going to be worthwhile compared to a steel block at $5,000. So everybody has to make that determination in their own mind. This engine, I believe, is going in a Shelby Cobra replica, and he wanted everything to be as light as possible. So that's what we did. So with all that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and start looking at some bearing clearance checks. This will probably not do any justice at all to this crank. Um, you can see how shiny it is. Um, it's a mirror finish with the rim polishing. So if I put my hand up here, you can see it in the counterweight. Um, lightened and hollowed raw journals um, should be, I haven't checked, but it should be, uh, oh, what do they call that, where they drill through the whole thing? I'm drawing a blank. So gun drilled there you go so crank's been gun drilled that means it's uh, been drilled all the way through on the center line to lighten it uh, this is a four and a quarter stroke and like i said it's been been lightened and it's been rim polished and uh it's almost a shame to stick that in an engine but we're going to use it and we're going to um first check our rod bearing clearance so i'm going to turn this thing around and uh, actually I'm going to check the main bearing clearance first. So I'm going to mic this and then show you all how, how that's done. First step is to zero our mic. So uh, every time I pick up a micrometer, I check it against the standard. Second step is to get our number for our main journal. So we're at 2.7479 and then we'll zero our bore gauge to that. And the next thing is to check our clearance. I'm at a thou and a half. So these are standard main bearings. So if I want to be at uh, that two and a half thousandths mark, um, then, then I need to add extra clearance. So we would, these are Clevite uh, MS1010H bearings. I will go to a Clevite MS1010HX bearings, and these are Calico bearings coated. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and swap the first one and the front one out and check everything again. All right, so this is a, uh, an X bearing, and we're getting two and a half thousandths, uh, two and a half, uh, 0025 on the front, 0026 on the back. So it's a good, straight, concentric bearing. I'm going to go ahead, uh, since I'm confident that the rest will follow suit, We'll go ahead and, and load up the rest of the main bearings. Um, I did check the rear with the other bearing and it followed the same clearance as the front one did with the other bearing. So uh, like I said, I'm pretty confident that I can go ahead and just load everything up. These torque at 85 and then our side bolts. Uh, these are actually a, uh, 
one, two, three, four, five, six bolt main. These torque at 38. All right, so we got all of our bearing clearances checked. They were all between two four and two six, which is uh, which is awesome. All the bearing bores were straight. Um, the crank journals were uh, you couldn't ask for any better. So uh, we got this part done, and I'm going to take it all apart, separate the bearings, mark them, and um, get the block washed one more time. Okay, so we got the block washed again. I had to do that. I had to. Clearance a, uh, a lifter bore bushing it is just a just a hair out of size, so I fixed that and um, got our bearings laid back in. So uh, bag it up and get it ready because next week we will do short block assembly. So don't miss out on that video. Um, as for right now, we can turn our attention to rod bearing clearances. All right, so it's the same deal with the connecting rods. Um, I measured uh, a one rod journal at 21981. And with a standard bearing, I was getting uh, about three thousandths, a little over, touch over. So if I mix a standard with a one under, um, I get 0023. So we're gonna go with that. And I'm gonna roll through and uh, check the other seven. Um, on these higher end rods, uh, I would suggest always wearing gloves uh, when you touch the rod bolts. Um, I don't think that these are L19s, but I'm going to be cautious just uh, just in case. Uh, L19s, if you have rods with L19 rod bolts, they are subject to, um, oh, what's the term for it? hydrogen something something I'll, uh, it'll, I'll, it, it'll come to me here in a minute but um, what happens is that you can contaminate the rod bolts with your skin I've actually heard of and actually had this happen to me once um, I had a, uh, a high-end pulling truck engine that broke a rod bolt just sitting there idling on the dyno so um, and, and another engine builder buddy of mine who uh, torqued all the rod bolts come in the next day and was going to put the oil pan on and saw a bolt head missing and it had uh, shot itself off of the engine and landed in the floor. So um, whenever I think of what's going on with the hydrogen something 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 I'll let you know but just be extra cautious when, when uh, messing with these higher end rods. All right, so that was pretty painless. I uh, went through all eight mixed standard and 1,000 rod bearings and all the rod bearing clearances came in at two, three, and two, four. So we're in good shape. Um, these rods torque at 75 pound feet and we can check the bolt stretch, uh, which I've already done. Uh, it's supposed to stretch between five and a half thousandths and six and a half thousandths. So you use a stretch gauge, check it, uh, the bolt length, set it to zero. Uh, with no load on it, then torque it, and then check it again and check your stretch. So um, that's pretty much the gist of checking all the bearing clearances, and and we are we are done with that. So I'm gonna drop the crank off and have the balance checked. Um, I've recorded all of our um, all of our weights for the rings, the pins, and locks, and all that sort of thing, and we'll we'll hang a bob weight on the crank and make sure that it's it's balanced it's supposed to have been balanced from bryant but i just want to double check so next week uh, after i get that crank back um we're going to uh throw a piston and a rod and the crank in and uh degree our cam and check piston to valve clearance and uh, hopefully get the short block done so tune back in next week and uh, see what the progress was that we made Hydrogen embrittlement. That's what I was wanting to uh, remember. So um, the, the bad thing is, is that nobody tells you about that when you start building engines. And you buy a good set of rods like Oliver or Callie's or, or, or whatever. They do not put that in the instructions. Um, so the L19 rod bolt is extremely... Um, just, I guess I would call it weak to touching it with your bare hands. 
and uh, it's best to wear gloves. So I have heard many, many instances of those bolts breaking because of just touching them uh, with your hands and, and hydrogen and brittlement and, you know, no stress, uh, no running engine stress. So just as a public service announcement for that. Hope you guys are having a good week. Um, I've got some trick flow heads to put together and ship out, so I'm going to uh, let you go, and I hope you have a good weekend. Talk to you soon.